just pulled a call from uh, Peter Denny Lookout. We've come in through, we're just shy of uh, Leinster and a little town called Agnew that was uh, gazetted back in uh, 1939. It's windy as buggery. Got a big high frame there and there's a, a battery over there we'll go and learn a bit more about. And um, there's a new new town and village down behind me there which is for the for the new mine. They do nickel and they do gold and things and uh, sadly really I guess that's pretty much what's left of the town behind me over there. But we'll uh, have a look forward there's some message boards here that we can find a bit more info about. The old town of Agnew. 1939 it was gazetted apparently according to the sign. I don't know whether I can go in here but I'll... Oh, there's a gap in the fence. We'll go over there and so we can give you a rundown of the equipment here. Yeah, it's a big battery and this one here's in a high frame. It's the old side of Agnew. Looks like they had a good uh, oh, 150 odd bloody housing sites. School site, recreational site, hospital. It's an interesting one there, but by the late 1930s the Warunga had become known as the Emu Mine, though its name brought no better luck. On Christmas Eve 1940 the disaster struck when an underground blast unleashed a torrent of water into a mine. Um, and the next year many left the town, uh, though the mine did return to production albeit relatively briefly. In 1948, another mishap resulted in the main cage crashing to the bottom of the shaft where it was left in a tangled mess when the mine was closed. It seemed to, it seemed the dry and desolate landscape that troubled Ted Heflin had taken its toll on those sought ag new gold. have the, I think they called it a 20 head battery, which bashes everything up. It wasn't until 1984 that the mine of any substance returned to Agnew when WMC resources began open cut operations of the old Emu mine. But in 1989, a downpour caused the mine to flood, killing six men in an eerie reminder to past tragedies. Many locals ceased using the name Emu after, after this, rather returning to Wairunga. So in 19, uh, 2001, the goldfields Australia purchased uh, WMC Gold's assets in um, the area and today continues the mine, the leases originally pegged by Tom Q and his mates. Perhaps modern technology is finally turning uh, the tide on Hefnan's dry and desolate landscape. So the 20 head battery behind me here was uh, relocated from the original Warunga Emu mine to this site in 1991. It was made in Kalgoorlie. So there we go, the uh, site of Agnew Town site, where there are, as I said, about 150 homes, school, and um, some of the uh, photos on Wikicamp showed that there was the, the pub or the tavern, but I understand it's, it's gone now. Oh, and you got the uh, modern energy in the background there with uh, these five uh, windmills. There you go. Um, the hotel was built in 1945 to service the nearby Emu mine. Um, it was the last building in Agnew and was demol demolished in 2018, having fallen to disrepair. Um, and uh, the panels that are in this modern day little uh, picnic area are uh, the leftovers of the hotel. Easy drive in. Oh. 
Okay, well, just ducked in behind the van because it's so windy. Um, and just give you a quick rundown. We left uh, uh, Agnew, I think it was there, that um, ghost town. Headed to Leicester, or Leinster. Um, Leinster was, um, hey, it's a massive um, mining town. It's um, set up, I think, a lot of BHP stuff. And uh, yeah, all the, all the quarters and uh, facilities are all in there, but it's pretty much um, what there is. There is a, um, a motor camp there, really just pay at the supermarket and go and park up and plug in. Um, we managed to get rid of uh, some waste and uh, there was some water at a, um, um, a medical facility that we're able to top up our uh, water supply. So that was good. Get out of this wind. Um, but yeah, really, other than that, it was kind of like, yeah, let's move on. So um, we've, uh, oh, there was a good uh, supermarket there too. <laughs> so we turn off of uh, there. Uh, just a big credit out to that road between uh, Leinster and uh, Mount Magnet. Fabulous road, loved it. One of the best roads we've been on. Really scenic, good quality, and plenty of stops. So if you're worried, like I was, like how much gravel and uh, unsealed sections there were, it's a, it's one of the nicest roads around. It's good. So now we've um, headed towards Kalgoorlie. We were going to be uh, parked up for a little while actually. So um, we have stopped at a spot here um, called the Goana Patch, and. Uh, We'll see if we can find a bit more information about it, but in short, whilst I'm in here in the uh, the, um, the shelter, um, a farmer many years back in gold rush times there um, sent his uh, Aboriginal stockman out to go and uh, herd up some animals, and um, it took him a while. You know, the farm was going like, geez, those boys have been out for a while. Anyway, what had happened is that the dog that they were using um, chased a goanna down a, a hole, so. Uh, they went over to get the dog out of the, the goanna hole and uh, our old mate just picks up a, a bit of gold off the ground. He goes, whoa, what, what have we got here? Well, by the time the farmer came out to find these boys trying to get their dog, those, those boys had found, uh, well, they took about a half a, a milk tin of gold. So um, needless to say, the gold brush was spurred, was spurred. I guess there wasn't a lot of farming done back then. And, um, and pretty much that find that he found, uh, that half a tin of um, gold, uh, half a milk tin of uh, gold, was probably the biggest haul that they got. The rest of it was sort of just pretty few and far between. So a little bit more history later on, we'll uh, cut it there. So here we go. I don't like my chances of finding leftovers. Okay, the goanna. Nice, nice little spot to stop. It wasn't so windy. Um, so there you go, overlooking the Thunderbox mine. Oh well, an unplanned trip. We are now in Gualia, just out of uh, Leonora. Parked uh, unbeknown to me. Whoa, man, it is so blowy. Um, it's a uh, car parking motor home or caravan spot just at the base here of the museum at Gualia. So pretty awesome bit of facilities. So we're gonna park here, check out the museum, the ghost town, hopefully tomorrow morning. It's a working mine in progress over there. And still there's the old moxies climbing up the hill over that side. And just in front of us is a swimming pool. Here we have the Gualia Museum. I've, uh, I see that it's open between um, nine till four on Mondays through to Sundays. And there's a calf that does some pretty nice scones, I understand. It's open from 10 till three.
the old head frame. So what have we got? The largest steam winder in Australia. They used to raise and lower skip bins and transport men below ground and raise the ore to the surface. It says that this gold bar was created for a reenactment of the framed gold bar dinner. The reenactment was held in April 1999, 100 years after the original dinner. In 1899 dinner, four of these bars were placed at the corner of the dining table representing one month's production of gold for the sons of Gwalia Mine. The replica bar is made up of brass, copper, lead and weighs 9.3 kilos. If it was the actual gold, it would weigh 23 kilos. And back then it would have been worth 2,000. In 1999 it was worth 320,000. In 2020, 1.2 million dollars. So the Herbert Hoover designed mine manager's house in 1898. The company complained bitterly about the cost of £600. So the house has been extended and modernised over the years to meet a number of needs for the family living there. A number of politicians, bishops and dignitaries have been entertained or stayed in the house. Following the closure of the mine, purchased the house for their regional geologist and used it until 1980. Many years after this, a caretaker lived there and opened the museum to visitors. By the late 1990s, the house was in poor condition and the Sons of Gualia NL and the state government funded extensive restoration works. Opened back as a bed and breakfast in 2004 and 2017-18 further restorations. Grand old house, Hoover House. Hey, good morning, we're going for a walk. That's us parked up on the hill there um, at Gualia. Not a bad night last night, it was windy as buggery. Obviously being up on the hill there you can see why. And uh, warning, generator buzzing all night. So uh, probably not one of our best sleeps. Um, but yeah, with the combination of the wind and the generator. But we're going for a walk this morning um, through the ghost town of Gualia. Here we go, ghost town. What have we got here? Arts place. Oh, it's a more sophisticated, built with a, an internal small bathroom and toilet. Stenciled metal linings. Very flash. Oh yeah, there's stenciled metal linings there. 
can't see anything inside, it's all locked up. But Classy. Just have to excuse the noise in the background. We've got a street sweeper going on in Gualia, in Ghost Town. There's a uh, one beyond disrepair. And sadly too, uh, some of the nicer parts here of Gualia, the Ghost Town is the, uh, the tavern. There's some quarters out the back here as well, but I think because of the, uh, the mine itself, it's unstable sinkholes are present probably found gold underneath the old uh, hotel here to the state hotel it's beautiful and you just imagine that working now with uh, still having the old pub meal and uh, and beer it's certainly be a populous place yeah, the town literally died overnight on December the 27th 1963 the mine was closed down permanently due to an accident population of around 1700 was reduced to 40 people and by January the 17th 1964 Gualia State Hotel had been closed. You've got to love this place. They have preserved everything, well, brought things back the best they can. But you can just come on in, wander around, and you get an idea of how these people lived. It's an old safe. It's like it could have been a, a washing room or something. This is the guest house. You can get an interactive map using a smartphone or tablet. 31 attractions. Look at the kitchen. Holy macaroni. And the old um, wooden st uh, fire stove, wood stove. Dining room. They do say once you walk into Close the doors, we'll do that. But yeah, the old, this is fancy, it's got the old pressed tin ceiling and walls. And then what have we got over this side? This is a big room. This is the dining room. It's very fancy. Not warm though, I tell you. Oh, mind you, it'd be bloody hot over the uh, summer months. No will close this. Let me leave. My duty. Oh well, that was it of the Gualia ghost town. Definitely a must come and visit. It's a pretty interesting place. A lot of history. Nicely, uh, nicely set up so that you can wander through things. We're gonna start uh, probably, yeah, we're gonna head down to uh, Kulkani, I think it is, and then uh, not too sure where we'll end up before Kalgoorlie.